Let's talk about hybrid meetings, or more specifically, hybrid lectures, which I did today for the first time. Well, I've done lectures online before, so that's nothing new with that. But the one thing that was a bit unique today was that in the... I was sitting here in my YouTube studio, and I presented a lecture at Lulo University, three, four hours to the north from where I am right now. And then there was a big classroom with, with all the students who were sitting there. And they had a camera that was placed pretty close to where my talking head was in the room. Let's draw a little sketch. It helps the understanding. So here's the classroom in Lulo, which was full of students. Something like that. And, and uh, they are out here listening. Let's just draw their heads. Something like that. And then the, what is called, the video projector, you know, where my, my talking head is somewhere here in this corner. So that's me talking about sound. And then there was a camera here, as close as possible to this one. This is actually quite important. How do you draw a camera? I'm not sure. Let's do it like so. So the camera gave me a video feed on what was going on in the lecture room. And here's a, uh, just a little example, because, you know, if they are looking at my talking head, and, you know, when you just look into the camera, it makes a huge difference on how it's perceived. Now I am talking to you, but if I'm looking somewhere else and talking, this does not feel as natural to you. I'm 100% sure. So by putting the camera up here, as close as possible to me, it looks, from where I'm sitting, as if the students are looking back at me. And that's very important. They also had a conference phone in this room. So when they talk questions... When they <laughs> talk questions, what kind of English is that? When they ask questions, I can hear them. But the biggest takeaway from this little hybrid meeting, hybrid lecture for me, is that this is an older classroom. So they had absorbers in the ceilings, so that's fine. But they had no wall absorption. Zero. And what happens then is that the sound quality over here, on me, the satellite, the lecturer, is pretty lousy. Because there's a lot of reverberation going on in this room and these microphones in the room are very good to picking up that reverberation so it's very hard to to hear what they are saying if they are close to the conference phone it's okay but these poor guys in the back of the room if they ask a question it's not certain that i can hear it and now with modern schools we always tell them to put in wall absorption in these rooms in an L shape, so that you get some on this wall, and you will get some on this wall. And I'm pretty sure that if we do that, this type of hybrid meetings will go a lot better. Because then you will get rid of most of that excessive reverberation, which will make it, it the conference phone will do have a much easier time to pick up the speech from this room and transmit it to me and it will sound a lot more natural here. So there's a lot of work to be done here with hybrid meetings. I think that's going to be the, the biggest, it's going to be all the rage now. When people are going, no more work from home, we're going back, we're back to normal-ish <laughs> at least. So, but we're still going to have people joining in as satellites and I love that. I think it's fantastic that I can bounce around like a ping pong ball in projects all over Sweden and doing lectures here and there and still get this improved improved visibility. I mean, there's uh, so much potential here, so much untapped potential. So, yeah, another little important thing that uh, is worth mentioning. In this case, the, 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 this was nothing fancy. This was just a simple, a simple web camera with an extension cable USB. And I, I think it was something like a Logitech C920. It's a pretty common, simple uh, webcam. And uh, the drawback with this one is that it has a field of view which is 
a bit too narrow. So unfortunately, I could only see like 80% of the students. So when you choose a camera for this, try to find someone that is a bit more wide angle. And there is another one called Logitech Brio, which has 90 degree field of view. And that should, that should probably cover the whole room, I think. I have one of those myself, but I don't have a classroom, so I can't, t I can't test it. But I'll, I'll do that sometime. And uh, it's also, I think it can also have a video feed in widescreen, which should be quite useful as well. So let's work more on this. And I look forward to, I would really like to do a, like a test hybrid meeting with a group of people who are sitting in a room with proper room acoustics, with wall absorbers and everything. And just now experience how much of a difference does it make, actually. Because the only way that I know of to sort this thing out with hybrid meetings and to get it to work, that's to start doing them. How else are you going to learn? And it's also important for a guy like me to be on both the satellite end and in the physical room. So I know how it looks like and feels like from both ends. And preferably I should be in the audience as well. Both in a real room audience and on the satellite audience. Yeah, it's like four usage cases here when I think about it. I mean, you got the uh, uh, presenter. Uh, what should we call it? IRL <laughs> in the room. Presenter. Satellite. And you got the presenter and the listeners IRL in the room and of course then of the final one listener satellite so there's, there's four four roles that there that we need to consider on how to make this hybrid solution hybrid meetings and how to make them work. Because if you're doing the... <laughs> you, see, you see it here. If you do the only the physical one, suddenly you're down to two combinations. And if you only do the, the satellite one, that's also quite easy. If everyone is joining in on the online call, everyone has their own camera and microphone, that's, that's easy. The challenge is to combine the two. And there's a lot of work to be done there. If you have some other interesting, let let's let me know in the comments. Love to get a discussion going on this because uh, more perspectives on the on a pro given problem is usually a very good idea. And in today's video, I want to talk about pocket squares. I'm wearing my favorite green jacket, a gray shirt, and an orange tie with a little burgundy pocket square. But uh, here's a thing you can do. Let's say orange tie, orange pocket square. It works, but it's uh, it's a bit too much orange. So here's one that I, I you used to use quite a lot before. A little orange stripe, because then it's just a little hint of this one. And that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Oops, autofocus. Now it's not that uh, dramatic. It's a bit more subtle, but still, when I was looking this morning, I thought it's... Uh, nowadays, I think it looks even better when you go for a completely different color. And especially this one I like. Because it's got gray lines and a gray shirt. And the burgundy, green, orange, gray, it all comes together. With a pair of white gray pants as well. And dark gray socks. So it's a complete outfit. Pretty cool. See you later. Have a nice weekend.